Hey, hey guys. Thanks so much for joining me today. Just gonna wait a few minutes to get started to let everyone sign on. <laughs> so yeah, how's everyone doing? I would love to know where you guys are all from. Um, I'm in Ireland right now. It's six o'clock at night. It's been such a beautiful day. The sun's just setting here. Um, very lucky to have the sun today. If you saw my Insta stories this morning, it was quite dark and drab. So, ooh, lots of people. Uh, Sacramento, Greenville, Virginia, Chile. Oh my gosh, wow. <laughs> uh, Germany, hello, Laura. I'm trying to read these, they're going so fast. Um, San Francisco, hello, Claire. Lauren from San Antonio. Susie from Kansas, hello. And just a reminder, anyone who's just coming on now, if you wouldn't mind switching your chat to panelists and attendee, um, that way everyone can see the chat function. Um, gonna get started in just a couple minutes. Just wanna see where everyone's joining from. Um, this is so exciting. So many different places, which is really cool. I bet it must be morning for some of you. So good morning. Um, like I said, for me, it's about six o'clock. So it's kind of late in the evening. Um, the sun's just setting. We're very lucky that finally starting to see those longer days. And then how many of you guys have experienced painting? Have you ever painted with watercolors before? Or who's just a beginner? I'd love to know. I've been painting a long time. Beginner. Oil painter. Oh, love oils as well. Never painted before. Amazing to have you. A little experience. Awesome. Quarantine hobby. That's, I'm sure that's been definitely a good way to pass the time. Some experience with watercolors and acrylic. Awesome, Hannah. Beginner in Baltimore. Happy to have you, Leah. Self-taught, me too, Ellie. <laughs> oh, your mom's an art teacher, how cool. Well, I'm so happy to have you guys. Um, just a quick reminder, anyone who's just joining us, if you wouldn't mind switching your chat to panelists and attendees so everyone can see. Um, so, I'll be checking the chat function periodically. Um, there's also a Q&A section. So if you have any questions throughout um, the class, you can pop them in there about painting or about the Just Paint course as well. Um, so I'll be answering questions throughout the class and then I'll be doing a bit of a Q&A at the very end as well. So I am so, so, so happy to have you guys here. Um, I, I've never done anything like this on Zoom before, so please excuse any, uh, any awkwardness or anything. <laughs> it's a little funny talking to a screen, but I'm so happy to have you guys here. And I'm really, really, really excited that you guys have taken this time out for yourselves. Um, taking this hour, to just paint and relax and have a bit of fun. Um, I hope you enjoy it and take away something from it too. So I just wanted to tell you guys a bit about me. Um, my name is Lauren. <laughs> I am a watercolor artist and illustrator. Um, I'm originally from California and now I'm based in Ireland with my husband, James, and our dog, Maya. Um, I'm the owner of the company Lauren Taylor Creates. I've been a professional artist for seven years and I've been painting my whole life. It's something I've always loved to do ever since I was really, really young. And I am self-taught. So I never went to formal art school, but I have gone to workshops and classes from different artists that I admire. And I think that's just a brilliant way to learn and to pick up different techniques and things. So. I'm really excited to finally be teaching and, and being able to, to do that as well. So I'm really, really inspired by uh, nature in my artwork, botanicals and landscapes. Um, I love living in Ireland because it is so, so beautiful here. So I feel very fortunate. Um, so basically, like I said before, 
Uh, thank you for being here. Today, I just really want you guys to focus on having fun if you're painting with me. Especially, it's, it seems like we have a lot of beginners, which I think is just absolutely brilliant. Um, this is definitely designed for people just starting out or people who just want a bit of a relaxed painting session each week. Um, so I think this will be really fun. And so I don't want you to be too hard on yourself. Um, just focus on the process of painting and don't worry about critiquing yourself or if it's good or bad. It doesn't really matter. Like the whole point of being here is to just let loose and enjoy enjoy art and enjoy making. So um, I'm really, really happy to have you guys here. So if you take that away from it, I am happy. And at the end of the day, it's an hour break from everything going on in the world and we just get to have fun and play with paint, right? So basically what we're doing today is we are painting a eucalyptus stem. You might have seen, I posted on my Insta stories earlier. Um, it's a beautiful shape, um, pretty easy. At the end of the day, it's just a bunch of oddly shaped circles and lines. So I feel like it should be something that would be, wouldn't be too hard to tackle. It also has such beautiful colors and variation in it. So I, I find eucalyptus quite beautiful and inspiring. So I hope you enjoy painting it as well. So basically I'm going to do uh, I'm going to do it section by section. So I'll do a small portion of it that you're able to watch me paint and then I'll stop and then you can paint if you're painting along. And um, during that time, I'll be able to look in the chat and look at the Q&A section. So um, I'll be able to answer your questions kind of as we go along. And then if there's any questions left over at the end, I will be answering questions um, in kind of a Q&A session at the end as well. I am so excited. Um, so let's dive in. So, so can you guys let me know in the chat if you're able to see my paint setup? Yes. Wonderful. <laughs> All right, so I have a dried eucalyptus stem that I thought we could kind of use as inspiration here. Um, it smells so good. I have some eucalyptus dried around the house, which um, it's really, really nice. So I'll keep this here and I will paint here. So we kind of have that for inspiration. Um, so I kind of wanted to go through the materials that I'm using. Um, if you had a chance to already set up your paints, that's great. If not, that's okay. Um, I'll spend a few minutes talking about my materials and also give you a couple minutes to get set up if you're not set up already. So I have my paper here. Um, this is a block of cold press arches watercolor paper. And a block means that there's a bunch of pieces or sheets of the paper glued together on all sides except for this little opening here. Um, and basically it helps hold the paper down and prevents it from buckling um, as you're painting. So, and then when you're ready to take it off, you could just slip a palette knife or even the back of a butter knife um, behind the top sheet and just cut it right off. Usually comes off very easily. And then kind of in the middle, I have some folded up paper towels here. Um, sometimes I use a super absorbent sponge, um, but a lot of times I just go through paper towels. You could also use like a kitchen towel or something as well. Um, my brush, this is a size 10 silver black velvet brush. Um, it's my favorite brush that I use. Uh, I use it a lot. It's a round brush um, and it holds a lot of paint and liquid in the brush and it comes to a really fine point here, which is great because you're able to still paint a lot of detail with this brush, um, but also cover a lot of ground, which is really nice. So I usually don't use um, small brushes unless I'm doing a really tight um, detail because I find working with small brushes, you tend to get a little too caught up on the details and then you end up doing a lot of small brush strokes, which isn't great. So I like to use a larger brush um, 
for most of my artwork. Then here I have my palette. So the colors that we're going to be using today are, we're just using four colors. So quinacridone, or no, sorry, <laughs> cadmium red, cadmium yellow lemon, uh, cobalt blue, and French ultramarine. And with these four colors, we are going to mix a few different greens and some nice colors that we're gonna use for the eucalyptus stem. Uh, the difference between hot and cold pressed paper is the texture. So hot pressed paper has a really smooth finish and cold pressed paper has um, a bit of texture. I don't know if you can see it, um, probably not. You might be able to tell a bit better once they start painting, but hot pressed paper doesn't have any texture at all. And it functions quite differently actually than cold pressed paper. Um, it can be a little trickier to work with hot press paper um, just because you can't blend as easily on it and you also, um, it, it kind of stains the paper. It just is, it's a lot harder to work with. I, I'm not really a fan of it. And especially if you're just starting out, it's not a very forgiving type of paper. So cold press is definitely better. Um, so like I said, we're going to be using four colors today. So cadmium red, cadmium yellow lemon, cobalt blue, and ultramarine. Now here I have two glasses of water. Um, I just use uh, regular like drinking glasses. Uh, usually when I'm in my studio, if I'm out um, on location somewhere, I'll use a collapsible uh, painting dish. And the reason why I use two is I use one as a dirty water dish and the other one I use as clean water. So my dirty water dish is basically for um, rinsing my brush uh, in between colors and in between washes. And the other one is for the times that I want to add water, um, fresh clean water to my paper. Or if the dirty dish is getting like a bit mucky uh, <laughs> and it has, I've been using it for a while, sometimes I'll rinse in the dirty dish and then rinse again in the cleaner one um, just to really get the color out of my brush. So to prepare the paint, what I do is I take a little spray bottle like this one and I just missed lately all the different colors, especially the ones I'm going to use. You don't want to create any wells of water in the paint. You just want to kind of moisten and soften the top. And this just allows you to paint a little bit more easily. Another thing that you could do instead is you could take your brush, dip it in your water dish, just wipe it off on the rim of the glass. And we'll use, we'll do this one. And just kind of run your wet brush over the top of the paint. And that will also moisten it as well. So you could do that over all the colors that you're going to use. And speaking of colors, what I do is I like to use tubes of paint, like this one. So this is Windsor Newton. Um, this is a Lizard and Crimson, which we're not using today. But I use tubes of paint and I just pour them into the well, into the wells here. And um, I usually let them dry. So I'll usually do it overnight. Um, so then that way they're a little bit easier to work with. Um, once they've hardened. If they're still wet, like just fresh out of the tube, a lot of times, um, a lot of times it's, you end up picking up too much paint um, and it's quite thick and can stick to your brush. So I prefer letting it dry before I use it, but you can use it straight away if you're eager to paint. Um, <laughs> and, I like tubes as well because it gives me a bit more flexibility with my palette. Um, you can swap out the colors, just replace the color that you need that's maybe running a little bit low, which is nice. So I like tubes and I've been using them for a long time. So if you're gonna paint along, um, feel free to use this time to get set up if you haven't already, get your paper out, you have your palette um, if you want to just get your paint nice and ready um, just run your brush 
gently over your paint. You can rinse for the next color. Just using four colors here. And yeah, so I'm going to get started on mixing the colors that we're going to be using. Um, like I said, we're going to do a few different mixes ahead of time. Um, one of the things I love about painting eucalyptus and really any botanicals is kind of blending and and making the painting a bit fluid. Um, and the colors, allow the colors to kind of flow together after I've added them to the paper. And in order to do that, um, it's important to at least mix some, if not most of your colors ahead of time before you start painting. That way you're not pausing to mix colors and then what you've already put on your paper starts to dry. So I'm gonna mix up um, a couple of colors now. Um, will watercolor ink work for this too? I don't have a lot of experience with watercolor inks, um, but why not? Yeah, I, if you have the same colors or similar colors, definitely play around with inks and uh, feel free to mix them up and use them as well. So the first color I'm going to mix is going to be a light green. So to get started, what I like to do is I like to scoop a bit of water onto my palette. And in order to do that, I'm just going to get my brush nice and wet and it's dripping wet. And I'm just going to drop the water onto the area of the palette that I'm going to mix my first color. So that was like one drop of water. So I'm gonna do four. So just load my brush up with water and drop it down. Essentially using my brush like a like a spoon. Right, so that was four. I'm just gonna wipe my brush off the side of the rim here before I go into my paint. Now I'm going to go into my lemon yellow and just really load up my brush. And then drop that into the water. And I just use the side of the palette to scrape off some of the paint that's still on the brush. And then dip it in our dirty water dish to rinse it off. Use the rim of the glass to wipe it off. And then we'll go into the cobalt blue. You can really get in there. Watercolor brushes are pretty hardy, um, especially this, these brushes. I This is my second silver black velvet size 10 brush, the last one I had for five years, and I only just replaced it recently. Um, and I'm not a precious person, not with shoes or purses or brushes or really anything. So um, I am quite rough <laughs> with them. So I you don't have to be careful with it at all. Feel free to just get in there. All right, so I'm going to mix it up with my yellow. Like that. We're just looking for a nice light green here. And while I do have a light green, um, this is a sap green on my palette. I, I honestly can't remember the last time that I actually used it. Um, the green paint that you can buy tends to be quite synthetic. Um, it's not a really kind of natural green color, which isn't ideal. Um, so I like to mix and make my own greens, especially um, by mixing colors. So what I'm going to do next, now that I've mixed up this lovely light green, I'm just going to take a tiny bit of red and add it to it. And that will just dull it down ever so slightly because right now it is quite a neon green. So I'm just going to dip the tip of my brush just like that. You can kind of see um, just a just a little bit of red and just add that in. And that will just make it a little bit more natural. I'm 
going to rinse my brush off really well. And now I'm going to mix the next color, which is going to be a darker shade of green. So for this one, I am, again, I'm going to use my brush to scoop four scoops of water onto my palette. Four, there we go. And I'm going to take my lemon yellow again as well. And really load up my brush and then drop it into the water that we just scooped out. Use the side to go ahead and get any remaining paint off your brush and rinse. And then I'm going to go into the ultramarine blue. This is such a lovely blue. I use this blue so much. This is probably the color I go through the quickest and have to replace the most frequently. <laughs> and just add that to the yellow. And it's incredible, just a different shade of blue can create a completely different color of green. There's so many variations of green that you can create just by mixing up different yellows. Like I have three yellows. This one doesn't look like yellow on the palette, but it is one um, when it's wet. Uh, and a couple different blues and I like to play around and create different swatches and things um, just to see, and just to get ideas for paintings as well uh, and see what colors I can come up with, uh, which is great practice to do. If you have new paints and you haven't, you don't have a lot of experience, just play around with them and see what colors you can create. So I'm pretty happy with this shade of green. I might add just a little bit more blue actually. So I. Because this is a darker color, I'm not gonna rinse my brush off. Um, I'm just gonna go straight in. And I'm gonna make this a nice bluey green because eucalyptus does tend to have that lovely blue tinge. Probably add a bit more blue to it later. But that will get us started. All right, so we're gonna rinse off. And so now I'm going to create a purple color. So as you can see on the eucalyptus stem, the stem itself, is this really nice kind of purpley tinge to it. Uh, and so we're gonna mix a color for that. So I'm going to take three scoops of water now and put them on my palette. So that's one, two, and three. And then I'm gonna go into my cadmium red and load up my brush this time with red. and drop that into the water. And this is a very vibrant red. It's quite an opaque color as well. Um, different watercolor colors uh, tend to have different consistencies. Some of them are more transparent. Some of them are slightly more opaque. And so now we're gonna go into our ultramarine and load up the brush with our blue and drop that into the red. And I might pick up just a little bit more blue. So we have a nice, lovely purple that will serve as the bulk of our stem. I'm gonna rinse off my brush. And the last color I'm going to put on my palette is a bit of red, um, just by itself. So I'm going to just scoop two scoops of water onto a new area and load up my brush with the red and just have that on the palette. All right, so now we'll get started on the actual painting. So I'm going to use this stem as inspiration, but I'm not gonna paint it exactly. So don't get too caught up in following exactly what I'm doing or exactly what this stem is. Just think of it as, like I said before, oddly shaped circles 
and lines. Because <laughs> that's basically what it is. The beauty of eucalyptus is that the leaves go kind of all which ways. They're on all sides um, going right down the stem. So you really can't go wrong with where you put a leaf on this, right? So now that we have rinsed our brush, wipe it off on the edge. I'm just gonna dab, dab it on my paper towel here because I have mixed my colors now and I don't really want to be introducing too much more water to them. So I'm going to go in to my light green now first. And I'm going to start at the top and I'm just going to holding my brush, I'm just going to place the brush down onto the paper, allowing the tip and shape of the brush to just kind of create the little top section of the stem. And then I'm going to create two little leaves next to it. like three three little leaves <laughs> so if you want to go ahead and do that with your light green yeah are you guys able to see me um sure no problem it wasn't working before showing me um whoops sorry let me change it Thanks for letting me know. If you guys definitely, it's helpful. Um, any feedback you guys have? <laughs> Let me just see. Oh, here we go. There we go. Is that better? Can you guys see the screen better? Is that okay? Are you able to see the the screen larger now? Just I do want to make sure you guys are able to see it. Okay, good. Yes, perfect. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, okay. So where were we? So we did three little sections here. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not sure why. Let me see if I can change the view. Sorry about this, guys. I was hoping that you'd be able to see the screen a bit larger. Maybe if I turn off my camera, I'll just do that and see if you let me know. Is that better? No? Well, that's a good point. If you change your, that's better. Okay. If you, I think you can change your view as well. Um, if you change it to just speaker, but I think it should be better now that I've turned my camera off. It sounds like, okay. <laughs> yeah, if you change it to full screen, that might help as well. So it's bigger as well. So, okay. So this is still wet. Um, so if you've been able to paint the light green little sections, uh, I'm just gonna wipe some of the green off here and I'm gonna go into my purple then. And I'm going to add a stem down the middle. No, we're not wetting our paper first. We're just going straight in. So if you did the, the three leaves, then you could just use the shape. See, they're nearly like the shape of my brush, almost exactly. So I just put pressure down on the on the paper with my brush. So now I'm just going to use the very tip of my brush, make sure it's nice and round with the purple, and just draw a line with the tip down the middle. And as you can see, some of the purple is now bleeding into the light green, 
which is kind of the effect that I want. I want that mixing and blending, which is why we mix our colors ahead of time so that we don't have to stop and mix colors as we go. So if you've added your stem now, we're, the next leaf that we're going to do is going to be in the front. So I'm going to pick up some of my dark green and do a bit of a shape of a leaf. In front of the stem. Rinse off. I might pick up a bit of red and actually drop that into the tips of the leaf. So because the green is still wet, the red just like blends into the green. So it creates kind of a nice effect. So I'm rinsing off my brush and just kind of wiping away the excess water. Um, the paint is already quite wet and so it doesn't need uh, loads more water added to it. So you'll just notice that I'm wiping my brush off in between uh, painting. So I'm not introducing loads more water to each color. All right, and then we'll go back into our light green. And maybe I'll just do some downward shaped leaves. So you notice I just twisted, rotated my hand so that the brush was pointing towards me. And just use the tip of the brush and just nearly just put pressure with the whole brush down on the paper. And that created a quite a nice leaf shape. I might mix the two greens a little bit for our next leaf. Just do one on either side and pull and lift. And so you get a bit of a gradation then um, as you lift out. I'm just gonna rinse my brush off and wipe it off. I'll give you guys a minute if you want to try it. I don't want to be going too quickly. So if I am, please let me know. I want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing and be following along as well yourself. So okay. So now I'm going to go into my purple and continue the stem. So we can see that the stem kind of because this leaf is in front of the stem don't want to cut through it, um, but I want to make sure that the stem lines up properly. So I'm just going to kind of hover over the leaf that is in front of the stem to carry on kind of where the stem would go and then at the bottom of that leaf continue the stem down like so, just in between the two leaves that we have. I may actually take some of the purple and add it to the tip of the leaf there, just to create a little bit of variation. Because these are still wet, we're able to kind of add color. You could also lift a bit of color. So if I rinse my brush and I dry it off on the paper towel, I can go in and just gently wipe some of the color away. Like so. And just kind of lightens it up. Another way that you can kind of make some variation is adding more water to an area. So my brush has quite a bit of water on it. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of drop that onto one of the leaves. And you can kind of see the water expanding. And that creates what's called a cauliflower. And a lot of times it's seen as a negative thing. It can, like if you drop water on an area of a painting that's drying or almost dry, um, you know, it would create these lines and it's not very desirable. But I, I kind of find it quite interesting, especially if you're doing a botanical um, or sometimes even if you're doing like bushes in the landscape, it could be quite 
quite a cool effect. So sometimes I like to do it on purpose. Okay, so we'll continue on then with our dark green. So I'll just do another, I'll do kind of a leaf, maybe across, semi across the front. And I'm gonna take a little bit more blue and just add it, add it in to my dark green. Just get, I just love to create variation. And so I'm gonna take this real bluey green and kind of drop it in behind. So we create that kind of look. So it looks like it's kind of in front and behind the stem. And I'm gonna rinse off my brush and then continue with the stem, the purpley color. So again, this leaf is in front of the stem. So we're just gonna hover over the leaf and follow the line down where the stem should be. Like I said, I'm just using this as kind of inspiration and not really trying to follow exactly the shapes um, that this eucalyptus stem has. Uh, I think from my angle anyways, it looked quite different to what it looks like to you. So a little hard to follow. Um, so I'm actually gonna go now into my light green and just continue on with some of the leaves. So just putting my brush down, full brush pressure and lifting up and doing a, the same thing on the other side, doing nearly the whole brush of my, the whole belly of my brush down. And then just as I'm lifting up, pulling away from the stem, just to create that kind of point. I'm rinsing. I'm gonna go into my red. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of red at the tips. Okay. And rinse. And if you can see right here where we added the water to this leaf, it's kind of now bled into the stem and into this darker leaf above and over and down. So it's, you're really creating these like beautiful connections into all the other leaves around it. So the next thing I'm going to do is take some of my purple again and just continue the stem down. And rinse. And let's go into our dark blue. I'll do a nice leaf going down. And maybe one on the side as well. And I think maybe in one of these ones, I'm just gonna take some water from my clean water dish. So you can see how <laughs> this is a very unattractive color now after mixing a lot of reds and yellows and blues and it's just created quite a mucky color so if if i put this color onto clean white paper it would look like a dirty spot so that's why i use this clean water dish as well if i wanted to blend out any of the edges um, or what i'm going to do now is i'm going to add some of the water to one of the leaves so i don't want it to be too dripping but i don't want to add too much water i'm just going to get my brush nice and wet. I'm going to wipe it off on the side and then I'm just going to drop some of the water onto this leaf here. And you just have to tap it and if it, you'll see instantly if water comes out of your brush and if it doesn't you can just tap it a few more times um, and to get the effect that you want. So I'm just going to wipe my brush off here. Um, the colors, I mean, the paper does affect the colors. Um, it's part of the reason why using higher end paper um, can be better. I know it's like really frustrating when you're just trying to learn and start out. You don't want to be spending loads on expensive paper, but it does kind of affect the color. So it could be your colors. It could be the paper. Um, it, it really depends on what you're using. I'm going to hop into the purple now 
and continue down with our stem. Rinse that out. All right, and let's go into light green. And this time let's do another leaf at the front. I think I did my stem a little too long. But see, that's the beauty of it still being wet is that I can just paint in front of it and it goes away. <laughs> use the tip of my brush just to create the shape that I want. There's no right or wrong shape here. And then let's go straight into our dark green and we'll do a bit of a leaf behind. So I'm just going to place my brush here. Kind of covering up where I just did my stem and I'm going to bring it back. But it just creates that kind of, I want, I want to get kind of that effect of the eucalyptus leaves rotating and going around. So I'm just going to go into my purple now. And I'm just going to draw the line back where, where I just covered up the stem. And I'll just kind of blend out beautifully. And actually, I'm just going to continue the stem down from this leaf here. and go into the light green again and do a nice leaf on the side and then we'll do a nice leaf on the other side. And see I just kind of twisted my brush again covering up the stem of it but that's okay because we'll just bring it back like so. And so I'm just going to add a bit of the red light green. I just think it adds a bit of interest to this light green color. Just kind of at the tips. Um, I feel like you can't tell as much with dried eucalyptus, but there is a bit of a red tinge on the very edges of the leaves that I think is quite interesting. I just love the variation of color in eucalyptus. And I'm not too concerned either about matching the color exactly. I kind of want to match the, the vibe, but I'm going to do the colors um, my own way. So I'm just mixing a little bit more blue into my green. Um, I want a mix of a, I want, I want to keep the dark green, but I just kind of like having a bit of a, a bluey color. I'm really loving um, what's going on up here. So I want to kind of bring that, that those dark blues down here as well. So I'm gonna take some of my purple and continue the stem down. Take some of this gorgeous bluey color and just drop a gorgeous big blue leaf here. Like so. I'm gonna go straight into my light green just to kind of create, um, kind of almost mixing up new, new colors as you go. And do a bit of a green leaf next to that. My brush off. Continue the purple stem down. And wipe my brush off and then go back into the light green and I'm just gonna do a leaf that's semi covering the stem like so so you can see like part of the leaf kind of goes in front let's go back into the dark blue and put some pressure down with the dark green color here. Like so. I'm gonna go into my red now, and I'm just going to drop a little bit of the red at the tips. Like that.
And so we're just gonna take our purple again and continue it down. Created a bit of a, a, of a curve as I was going. Um, not quite as curved as the stem is, but I'm just gonna kind of try and continue that, that curve a little bit. And rinse the brush. And I might actually, I'm, I'm gonna go in with some clean water here and drop a bit of this water into this front light green leaf. It's a little vibrant for me. I think adding a bit of water will just kind of lighten it up and create some of that magic and interest that we have up at the top. I'm gonna go back into my light green and I'm just going to create a leaf in the front here. And go into my red and add a bit around the tip. So I'm just rinsing and wiping my brush in between nearly every time, every every brush stroke or every time I'm putting color down or switching colors. Um, so that way. I'm, like I said before, I'm not introducing loads more water um, to the colors that I have on my palette. And I'm not introducing too much water to my painting. So I'm using the rim of my glass as well as my paper towel to kind of manage how much water is in my brush. Because these brushes can hold a lot of water, which is fantastic for doing, um, for doing washes and for well, for painting anyways, but it can also be bad in a way if you're not paying attention to how much um, pigment or water is in your brush. So that's why I'm just constantly wiping it. And sometimes I wipe it too much and I can dip it back in my, wa in my water dish, but if I haven't wiped the water away, if I've underdone it, then, um, then that's not good. So I usually will wipe in between every, nearly every stroke. All right, so we'll do two more leaves and we'll, we'll do a stem and two more leaves and then we'll continue the stem down the rest of the way. So just gonna pick up a bit more of my purple color. And like, like the ones that we did before with the leaf in the front, we're just gonna pay attention to where the, the stem was and hover over the leaf and find the bottom of the stem under the leaf and continue it down like that. And now I'm going to go straight into my dark green and do my last two leaves. I'm gonna make them nice fat ones at the bottom like that. And see like, that's quite oddly shaped, but I feel like that's appropriate for the eucalyptus. Um, so you don't have to do them perfectly, which is really nice. Uh, it's very forgiving. Your leaves can be any shape you want them to be. Um, I'm just going straight into the light green here and I'm gonna do another leaf at the other side. And I'm going to rinse my glass, or sorry, my brush in my glass and pick up a bit of red and just drop that kind of into this, actually probably into both leaves, just to create a bit of variation. Now you don't always have to mix your colors on the palette. You can mix them on the painting as well. So, and sometimes you'll get really cool effects by doing that. Um, so like this, you have this, if we had mixed this red into this dark green, it would be quite a dark um, gray color almost. But because we're just mixing it on the leaf here and not fully scrubbing it in, just kind of dabbing a bit of red in, we've gotten this nice beautiful blend of this dark bluey green and red here. And I'm gonna rinse my brush and I'm going to continue the stem. My purple's running kind of low. Well, that's okay. I think I have just enough to finish the stem. 
load up my brush with the purple and I'm just going to continue down with the stem to create a line. I like to do, um, anytime I'm doing botanicals, I kind of like to create that angular cut effect. Um, it's just kind of a stylized thing I like to do. I'm going to pick up a bit of the red and drop it into the stem as well. Into the base. See how it kind of looks like it's been cut at an angle? It's just something that I think kind of looks cool and finished. And there you have it. So that's how I like to paint um, a eucalyptus stem. Sorry, live the ending cut. Wait, I don't understand. It's it's just basically, you know how like when you bring um, fresh flowers home and you cut cut the flower kind of at a diagonal. <laughs> um, I just like to kind of create that effect when I'm doing paintings of uh, botanicals as well. So yeah, so that's kind of my, my take on eucalyptus. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed painting along with me and creating that. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to switch the cameras here. Or is anyone still painting? I don't want to take this away if anyone is still going. Feel free. <laughs> yes, OK. Awesome. So glad that you guys are enjoying it. Um, so this was the, the eucalyptus and um, I'm glad that you enjoyed it. Now I did mention a bonus. I don't want to take the screen away just in case anyone's still working on it. Um, I'll put it back up if anyone needs it again. Uh, I'm just going to bring my camera back here. Hello again. <laughs> Let me just switch the Switch the audio there, okay. So does anyone have any questions? Feel free to pop them into the q and I'm happy to answer anything about um, this painting. Do you edit the painting after it's partially dried? Sometimes, uh, it depends what I'm painting. Uh, a lot of times a landscape I'll do in different layers. Um, I try not to do more than two or three layers. Uh, so I will go back after the first layer has dried and I'll paint again or paint a bit more. With watercolor, it's better to stop before you think that you're done. Um, when you're about 80% done, stop, go and have a coffee break, uh, walk away from your painting and come back to it later. And a lot of times you'll see that it is actually finished. Uh, if you just keep going, you can overwork it. So it is good to, to stop as well. Um, what's the best way to clean the brushes? I just rinse mine in water, basically. Um, I don't really do anything special. Occasionally, I'll clean it with just soap. Um, it's not really like oil painting. You have to really scrub them and wash them, but I, um, I usually just rinse them in water. Um, let's see what other questions there are. My color keeps them blending into the stem too. Did I use too much water? Um, possibly. I I had uh, the color kind of blending into the stem um, as well. Uh, but it was kind of an effect that I I wanted. Um, I kind of like when the colors kind of blend and bleed, especially for a painting like this. Um, but if that's not really what you're trying to achieve then and, and you're getting that kind of blending then yes you're probably using too much water um, it might also be a good idea to let a section dry before moving on as well if you have tubes of paint do you recommend putting them into the palette prior to the class so they can dry yes i do um if you put the paint straight into the palette and use it it you can do that so um, it's not that that's not like huge no no it's just a little bit more difficult to work with um, especially if you're just starting out so basically um, 
if you if you do that, if you work straight away with the paint, uh, it's quite opaque and thick and can stick to your brush. Um, and it's a lot harder to mix into your palette. Um, you might actually bring your brush over to your paper and realize like you have a big blotch of paint stuck in it. So I do recommend putting it in your palette probably the night before and letting it kind of cure and then using it. And you just, like I did at the start of the class, you can use a little spray bottle to spritz your paints then when you're ready to use them, or you can use your brush and just kind of dab them with water. I'm using palettes. I found my paint very watery and not very pigmented. Would the tubes help improve the consistency? Yes, um, yes. The, the paint palettes or the, the little um, pans of paint where it's, it's hard and you buy it hard, um, those tend to be very dried out, which is another reason I prefer tubes. But you don't have to go out and buy all new paint. What I would recommend in that case is to do the, the spritzing technique or the brush, you know, dabbing your paint with brush, um, like more like 15 minutes before you start painting. Um, so that way it has time to really kind of penetrate the, um, the dried out paint and kind of moisten it up before you start painting. I have a random mix of paints that are different brands. Is it okay to mix them together or will they not mesh well? It's definitely okay to mix them. I use, I mostly use Winsor & Newton, but I also like Daniel Smith and Core, um, but those are just the ones I, like I use, I would be happy to use other ones as well. Um, different brands have different qualities and different benefits. Um, so I definitely think it is okay to mix them. Um, I think the more the merrier. <laughs> How do you mix up your palette? Do you have an example of a palette setup where colors go? Uh, I kind of just follow the rainbow <laughs> with mine. Um, it, it kind of comes down to personal choice. Uh, mine go from red to yellow to blue. And then I have my browns in a different section, my blacks in a different section. And then I use a separate section of my palette um, where for colors that I'm just testing out that haven't made it into the permanent areas of my palette just yet. Um, so that's kind of the flow that I've created, but it, it's up to you. It's whatever, um, whatever way you want it. Let's see if there's any other questions. How often do you clean your palette? Um, I usually will wipe off the mixing areas uh, in between like every day, basically like in between painting. Um, so just because I need to, I need to use them again, and I might be mixing different colors from day to day. So I just take a wet, um, a wet, uh, like <laughs> going blank here, a paper towel, and I just wipe them off with the wet paper towel. What tool is most important investing in, in your opinion? Paper or brushes? That's a great question. Um, my brush, not, well, this one I recently, like I said before, I've recently replaced it. But the one that I had before this one, I had for five years. Um, uh, they're not cheap brushes. Uh, it's definitely an investment, I think. Um, but when you spend a little bit more on a brush, uh, you do tend to get like a nice fine point. The hair, uh, cheap brushes, like the hairs come off. Um, so you might find that your painting is full of hair, which is really annoying because then you'll use your finger to try and let, to get, get them out when the paint's still wet and it can create lots of smudges and marks that way. Or when, if you let it dry, you can usually still see a little hair mark um so a brush is something that you would have a lot longer um paper is important as well i think if you're just starting out if you wanted to get some like cheap cheap watercolor paper get loads of cheap like a big pack of cheap watercolor paper but just get like one or two pieces of um nicer paper even just a small thing and just so you can see the difference because when you're using cheap watercolor paper 
it can be hard to work on. And so you might get frustrated and think that you're not doing, doing it right, but it could just be your paper. So I think um, a little bit of both, I don't know if that's very helpful, but um, let's see, any other questions? Can you repeat the which colors you mixed to make the dark and light green colors? Um, the yellow I used was uh, cadmium yellow uh, lemon, uh, I believe, and the blue for the light was cobalt blue. And uh, I added a tiny tinge of cadmium red and the dark blue is uh, French ultramarine. Uh, Jonathan says, I had difficulty finding the Ron Branson brush. Michaels and Joann's didn't carry it. Is there another name for this type of brush that I should be asking for? Good question. Um, I think a few people mentioned that and it might just be that it's only available over here. I'm not sure if it's available in the States and I'll double check that. Um, Blick as well is a great art supply store. They have like a lot of um, different makes, but basically it's just a large wash brush. Um, it's about an inch and a half wide um, and it's a flat brush. So it's great for doing um, washes and stuff. So if you look for a large uh, flat brush um, that, like I said, it's about an inch and a half wide, something that size should do. All right, guys, well, I think I think that's about it. Um, I am so happy that you guys were here joining me. Um, this was amazing and it was really brilliant to have you guys. Um, thank you so, so, so much. I hope you enjoyed um, painting and creating. I hope you guys had fun.